up everyone? David from DOD Media. Isn't that awesome? Got this as a Christmas present from a friend of mine. Got some YouTube DOD Media paraphernalia. Okay, in today's tutorial, I wanna show you how you can refine your color grade in Premiere Pro to accentuate the subject that you had framed your shot for, so that even in the color grading process, you make that subject pop out even more so that your viewer's eyes are drawn straight towards it. All right, spin that intro. Okay, if you've ever shot photos in Lightroom or Photoshop, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Like you, you do your initial color correction, your treatment and all that, and then you come in with the adjustment brush and you paint in certain sections for the eyes, for the background, for detail, for sharpness, for saturation, for exposure, all of that. And it allows you to just accentuate features within the photo without covering the whole thing in that, in that treatment in that effect. And it's no different in video. You can do this to accentuate certain parts of the frame, certain areas that you want to highlight, that you want to add the exposure, saturation, all of that to, just to draw the focus to it. Now, in the coffee sequence that I did in the beginning, every single one of those clips has a base layer of treatment on it, which was a LUT that I applied and then adjusted each clip and the LUT individually so that they all look and feel the same, so that there's a continuity in the, the color correction look aspect, thing, style. I'm just throwing words out there now, so that they all look the same. But then on top of that, I also had a secondary treatment just to refine that look, just to refine those, those areas, that subject that I wanted you to focus on. So let's jump into Premiere Pro and I'll show you exactly what I had so that you can see the setup that I used to do this kind of double grade system. All right. Okay, so if we look at this shot from the sequence, which is a really simple shot, it's just the top of the mug with the steam coming up and it's kind of swirling because there was a little bit of a draft going around it, which is really nice, accidental, but really nice. The lighting is super simple. It's all natural light apart from one light right in the back, like right behind that steam to really highlight it. And that's just the, the YN300 um, two little LED panel from Yongnuo. And the whole thing was shot at 120 frames a second so that I could reduce it to 20% speed, which is a fifth of the speed of the original, you know, normal real life. So as a result, you get this really nice slow motion swirl of the steam going up above the mug. Now this is the final grade that I chose for this clip. And in fact, the tilt up I added in post because I wanted the eye to follow that steam as it was moving, as it was swirling upwards. It wasn't something I filmed, I just added it in later with some position keyframes. So this is the final clip that I got that steam swirls up and you can see every individual particle of it. Beautiful. But if I go ahead and remove the grade that's on top of this by deleting these two adjustment layers, bam, that clip is far less interesting. If I play it through, you can still see the mist. It's not nearly as as clear, as as pronounced as it was before. This layer here is just the black bars which I've applied, which you can actually get for free from my store if you go and check out Wider is Better. So let's go ahead and grade this clip. Now, as I mentioned before, we'll do an initial grade by dragging an adjustment layer over that. If you haven't got an adjustment layer handy up here, then just go right click, new item, adjustment layer, and it'll create an adjustment layer based on your current sequence settings. Cool. So with this adjustment layer, I wanna come over to color. Now, usually speaking, I would just apply a LUT to this. I'd use one of my uh, vintage LUTs or cinematic LUTs, which you can find in the description if you're interested uh, for a cine profile. But for this tutorial, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and grade it straight in the Lumetri panel. So I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast to this. I'm gonna increase the highlights. I'm gonna drop the shadows considerably. And then I'm gonna increase the whites by about 12 and drop the blacks by about 12. And then I'm gonna to come to the curves. I'm gonna plop a dot right there in the top of that bottom square, bottom left square, and then dragging this bottom node upwards. I'm just gonna curve that line a tiny bit. Okay, then back up to basic. I'm gonna increase the contrast again, and then I'm gonna drop the shadows just that little bit more to about there perhaps. And that way, if we turn this on and off, you can see the difference that's already making on the picture, it's looking much better. It's looking much more interesting. However, that steam just 
ah, it's not quite punchy enough for me. So one way to make that punchier is to do what you would do in Lightroom or in Photoshop, which is to apply a an adjustment area rather than adjusting the whole thing. I'll show you what I mean. Select your adjustment layer, hit Alt and drag it up one, and that will create a duplicate of that adjustment layer. Now that has the same Lumetri settings on two adjustment layers, which means you're basically getting that like times two. So just come up here to your effects controls and where you've got Lumetri color on the second adjustment layer, just hit that arrow there and it's gonna reset that whole um, effects preset for that adjustment there. Great. Now, here's where it gets fun. We're gonna come over to exposure. We're gonna bring the exposure up by, let's say, 0.3. We're gonna bring the highlights up by about 30. And we're gonna bring the shadows down by about 50. Then we're gonna bring the whites up by 15 and the blacks down by minus 15. All right. Then we're gonna come into creative. And here we're gonna add a load of sharpening Let's go for, I don't know, 40 sharpening. Cool. Now, with this done, this looks, I think it looks a little bit too much. I mean, this looks nice, and if I graded the whole thing like this, cool, that would be great, but that's not what I'm going for. What I'm going for is something more refined. So, if you scroll up to the top of your uh, Lumetri effect, you'll see these three things here. Now, I tend to go with either of these shapes for a mask because it's just... It's a little bit easier, uh, saves you a bit of time. But I'm gonna go ahead and draw, free draw a mask. And I want this mask to start around here and I want it to come around all of this steam like so and come and converge down at the base of the glass and then just move this up a little bit. Great, and what's happening now is that's masking that adjustment layer, so that secondary grade simply to the area that you have selected. So come along and give it a bit more feather because to make it look natural, you need it to feather out. It's not gonna look good if it's just a solid line with zero feathering like that. You need it to feather out. Maybe, depending on what resolution you're shooting at, uh, this is at 1080, so let's give it maybe 120 feather. Yeah, 119, 120, cool. And now we can come down and just fine tune that a little bit more. So I wanna actually drop those blacks even more and you can do this, you know, relying on your monitor or if you have some scopes up because your scopes will give you a lot more of an accurate read on what you're actually doing. You can see all these crushed parts of white here are actually because of this, this backlight which was just completely blowing out the shot. But I don't mind that. I don't mind blowing out certain parts of the shot. I mean, that's, that's, just, that's just cool. All right, and already that is just looking so much sharper. Your eye is just drawn to that steam so much more. If I toggle this adjustment on and off, you can see just how much it's doing and you really notice that sharpness in those particles of steam. It's just, it's fantastic. Now the thing is, as I told you, I moved the camera, I tilted that camera so that it slides up and down. So, well, what about the mask? You know, the mask is gonna look weird when it's um, all the way down here where it's actually on the mug. So this is where we actually track the mask. So we hit this keyframe at the very beginning of that clip on the mask path, and we come to the very last frame, and we add another keyframe by setting that dot there and then just select the mask where this keyframe is active and just drag it up to maybe there so it's not on the mug. And then over here, you drag it down and lay maybe a little bit over. Now, if I scrub through the timeline, you can see that mask is actually moving while I'm scrubbing along. And it's not perfect, it's just doing a simple movement down like that. And you can actually track a mask to an item if you would like but I'm not gonna be doing that on this tutorial because it's, it's a lot more complicated, or not complicated, but it's just a much more involved process to, to track a mask like that. So I will do a tutorial on tracking a mask soon. However, for this, just moving the keyframe like that, it's sufficient. And if I play this through now, that mask follows that steam, follows that mug, and it just, oh, it just adds so much to the shot. And you can do that literally just duplicating an adjustment layer 
and going in and just fine tuning that subject, that thing you want to narrow your focus in, where you want to narrow the viewers focus into. And just like that, your production value goes from here to here. It's awesome. Let's watch it one more time. All right, that's all from me. I hope you found this really useful. I hope you use it to accentuate the detail, the subject in your shots, because your framing is, it, it's a shame not to just boost it that extra little bit in post-production. Give it a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Hit that subscribe button to get more videos from me at DOD Media. Leave a comment in the comment section. I will get back to you. You might even win something free from my store. Check out my Instagram channel. It's growing really slowly, but it's growing. Oh, and uh, just a little something. Did you notice this? Uh, nice. See you in the next video. Shh.